Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Carpet Labs. Um, in this video we're going to be talking about um, alkanols and alkanoic acids. Um, two um, families of hydrocarbons that we need to be familiar with uh, going into the topic on esters. Okay, so let's have a, a quick kind of recap of, it, um, of alkanols. Okay, so we've, we've met this kind of um, family of compounds before when we've looked at hydrocarbon naming rules. So that is they contain um, an OH group which is also known as a hydroxyl group. Um, so that hydroxyl group, or OH group, um, so this is, this is our functional group, we would say. That's the, this is the thing that decides um, that a substance uh, is, belongs to the alkanol family. Okay, so we've replaced um, uh, one or more hydrogens with an OH group. Okay, so an example would be, say, ethanol, where we take the, the structure of ethane, which looks like would look like this, and then we take this hydrogen away, substitute it for an OH group. Okay, an oxygen connected to a hydrogen. If I wanted to be a little bit more specific to show you how that bond is connected, I could show you that it looks like this, and there's two lone pairs on the oxygen here. Okay, so now we're going to have a quick look at alkanoic acids. Okay, so this is a new, a new family of, um, of hydrocarbons that contain a particular functional group, which is the COOH group, um, which is also known as the carboxyl group. So they are often um, also known as carboxylic acids. This is the more um, old-fashioned but still long-lasting kind of term that chemists would use to describe um, describe a, a compound that belongs to this family, a carboxylic acid. So the COOH group. Um, so it so what we would it, it actually looks like we've got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then with a hydroxyl OH group um, attached there. Okay. So which so COOH is always at the end of the chain because this carbon that makes up the COOH group can't connect to anything else. It can only make one bond to to some other thing, which we would in place of the R here. That could be a hydrogen or a carbon chain. Okay. So um, yeah. So this is the sort of thing that we would see. Okay. So I'll just so an example that we might have would be um, acetic acid. Or ethanoic acid is as it's more technically known, uh, but less commonly known in in actual chemistry circles. Okay, so you'd have a carbon with has a carbon with three hydrogens. Okay, and this group there. So we would do that as to write its molecular formula. We would write it like that. Okay, so it's something that you would have seen before. All right, so. Um, that's, that's kind of how we would represent these two, com two families of compounds. The first one is something we're more familiar with, containing an OH group, and then alkanoic acids, less familiar, containing the carboxyl COOH group. Okay? Um, now, part of the reason that we're doing this is that we're working towards this idea of how we make substances called esters. And esters are compounds that are formed by reactions of alkanols with alkanoic acids. Okay? So we need to be familiar with the properties of and the structure of each of them. Okay, so I'm going to just um, take a moment to draw the structures of ethanol and um, ethanoic acid. Okay, so I'm going to do it, so ethanol. Okay, and we have a lone pair of, on our oxygen here. Okay, and so this is the structure of our acetic acid or ethanoic acid. Okay. Okay. Because part of the, the the one of the things that we need to be looking at here is the difference in intermolecular forces between these two type between these two families of compounds. Okay. Now, so remember, intermolecular forces relates to how one molecule interacts with another. What types of forces can it um, can it do to interact with other molecules? Okay. So we know that. Um, because we have this OH group here, okay, so if I use a different colour, 
we know that this OH bond is polar. We have a negative end for our oxygen and we have a positive end for our hydrogen. Okay, um, And so what that does is that means that we can get hydrogen bonding. So this can undergo hydrogen bonding with itself and it can also undergo hydrogen bonding with other things like water. Now what we notice is that this OH group over here also does the same, has the same behaviour. Okay, that this bond over here is polar. Okay, now also what we notice is that this bond over here is polar because the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon, so it pulls it tends to pull electrons towards itself. Now, in a single bond, that difference is fairly small, um, not large enough to really have a noticeable impact. Um, but when you have two, like two bonds here, a double bond, there's more electrons that can be pulled, so the difference is magnified. So you have a polar bond here and a polar bond here. So this means you get this means that in alkanoic acids you get stronger hydrogen bonds than you do in an alkanol. Okay, so that so that the intermolecular forces are stronger in alkanoic acids than they are in alkanols, um, but they're still much stronger than if you say had our substance like ethane. Okay, which has the same number of carbons as both of these two substances. Um, it's part of the alkane family. Okay, but so here you've got no hydrogen bonding. Okay, you've only got only dispersion forces. So relative to these other two, this one is the weakest by far. Okay. Um, put this up here. Okay, so that wraps it up. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.